welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, here with my trusty co-host, Jake Zabrelli. Uh, we just got back from uh, a full day. No joke, man. No joke. It was an entire full day over at the uh, Blockchain Expo. Uh, Jake, what's your, what's your two uh, socials on the Blockchain Expo before we get started here? Well, it was great to see a l several blockchain companies, Web3 and Crypto... Well, you know, even some crypto we saw one chain there uh, but for considering <laughs> it's called a blockchain expo there really wasn't a lot of blockchain there it's kind of disappointing in that sense i would say there's probably less than that 20 percent of the actual event was blockchain That's, that was and yeah. they're all shoved in a small little corner which is kind of sad to call it a blockchain expo yeah at the back of the room all the way on the far end of the convention center is the blockchain stuff, and yet the title of the expo is blockchain. What? What is that? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it is what it is. All right, yeah, but overall, I still had fun. I still had fun just going to talk to people face-to-face. -face. It was a free event, free parking. Um, was, was it free food? I don't think it was free food. No, the food was not free. You had to pay for that. Oh, okay. Oh, man. And they ran out of a lot of stuff, too. So. And they ran out of food. <laughs> yeah. All right. So get this out of the way here. This is written by um, Andrew Thorvalis from Decrypt.co. Russia blocks access to crypto exchange OKX. Russia has blocked access to OKX, the world's third largest crypto exchange by volume, at the request of the Prosecutor General's Office on Tuesday. A search for the exchange's domain under record from Roskomandazor. Russia's internet censorship agency shows that the site was blocked under Article 15.3 of Russia's law on information, information technologies, and information protection. The article protects against the spread of fake information, threats to financial organizations, costs for extremist activity, among the other things. However, no specific reason has been given for the website banned at this time. OKX did not immediately dis uh, respond to decrypt request for comment. The local NGO, Rokonsnovombabda, has also listed OKX.com among its registry of blocks. Yeah, I don't know if I have any comment other than that. I wanted to do it as a converse to this co this commentary and to say that if uh, <laughs> if everything was properly decentralized, Russia couldn't ban anything. It's like, great, great Russia, you're banning another centralized entity. Like you should, honestly. If the, U if the U.S. decided to ban all centralized entity, which they won't because they just want their fingers up their butts, um, they want to be able to control everything from the back end. That's, that's the uh, terrible analogy. Um, but if the U.S. did it, I wouldn't not be disappointed because it's like this is the you can't ban decentralized, 
right? Because how would you do that? That's like telling people they can't trade currency for goods. And that's all that we're trying to do. But... Okay. If if we if you and I if you and I right if you and I can use can use the um, uh, what's it called uh, tap to pay we were talking about using tap to pay right you use it all the time I use tap to pay too if you can put a crypto wallet into you know your phone which you totally can we already have them then you could do tap to pay through crypto right. I mean, how hard would that be to do? It really wouldn't be that hard to do. And then there's no need for the government to do anything. You just, you, you from your wallet, which you're already doing, although technically with tap to pay you're doing it through a digital wallet through some company, but um, because we don't have digital dollars yet, although we know the U.S. is going that way, uh, we could conceivably just do tap to pay through the wallet in your phone. And then why does the government need to be involved with that? They don't. Like they currently don't need to be involved with everything you do right now even though they are trying to be so to me it's it's just a sign of the times it's the uh, yeah ban the biggest guy in fact you should buy ban everything russia go ahead please do it because that will force people to use other methodologies if people really want to trade crypto with each other or, or across the world they have to get their own damn wallet and they should so not your keys not your crypto moving on to uh, Alice Key with an article on Decrypt. After two years of debate, Europe finalizes landmark crypto rules. All right, Europe, let's see what you have to say. European Union officials have agreed on the final wording of the landmark crypto legislation, which could pave the way for a Europe-wide regulatory approach. Because, you know, everyone in Europe is on board with this since Germany owns uh, the European Union. The full legal text of the Market in Crypto Assets Regulation, or MICA, MICA, was approved at a meeting of uh, European Union ambassadors on Wednesday, according to a letter from the committee chair. In the letter addressed to the European Parliament Chair of the Committee on Economic and Monetary Affairs, I don't care who this person is, said that the cooperation between the Parliament and the Council should enable the regulation to be approved on its first reading in Parliament. So just read it and approve it. In June, policymakers agreed to the deal on the legislative package after two years of back and forth. Sounds sexy. The regulation in its current form will require anyone seeking to issue crypto to publish a crypto asset white paper. If you want to do this, you have to do that. Fine. Containing information about their product, project, rather, not their platform, their project. Issuers of stable coins, meanwhile, will be subject to specific capital requirements. You need to back all of your stable coin with euros or whatever coin is appropriate. This means projects will need to hold reserves, as I just said, to back up the value of their tokens in an amount proportional to the amount issued. Though local authorities could increase the amount of funds required based on how risky it is judged to be. The legal text will now go on to the European Parliament, where, subject to approval, it will likely be published on the official journal of the European Union next year, with the rules to come into force in the new year of 2024. Crypto advocates welcomed the news, but said that the legislation had yet to address several key points, including non-fungible tokens and decentralized finance. The marks at the end of the heated but necessary discussions between the EU and co-legislators, which had been ongoing for, as I said, two more than two years, the Brussels-based European Council Initiative, or EUCI, said in a statement. They suggested... The group suggested that a heavy focus on stablecoins in legislation was a result of its origins as a response to Facebook's DM, <laughs> formerly known as Libra. That was Lyra, anyways. A uh, project that lawmakers had taken a very defensive approach against. So, the UCI added that NFTs are excluded from the MICA scope, 
creating unnecessary if regul uh, creating uncertainty if regulators across the EU member states used different interpretations of the assets. DeFi projects will also be not be affected by the regulation, but uh, EUCI said that the next uh, that these were not properly uh, defined in the final text, of course. Despite the techniques that UCI co-founder Marina um, Markazik said that it was optimist, uh, she was optimistic about the impact of the Mika will have on the industry, creates a brand new set of rules for crypto projects. One of, will change crypto's current position as the underdog and make it fully fledged participant in the financial series space, services space rather. She said, at the same time, we also believe that the industry should hold, should still remain able to innovate without any undue burdens. It comes as a uh, Marriott McGuinness, the European com uh, Commissioner with Responsibility for Financial Services, said the crypto regulation would be top of the agenda in discussions with U.S. officials next week. So, let's see, is there anything else I want to read on this? Yeah, that's all I want to say. So. Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's move on over to the next news. This is written by Decrypt. Uh, sorry, but written by Emily Tonelli uh, on Decrypt. Yep. So. Mm, I don't know. I think they're just gonna take a big old chunk of the pie out of out of Celsius each of them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Gonna buy out the debt and then. No, I think they're all gonna share it in somewhat equally. Depending upon who thinks is is more lucrative, so. That would be nice. Okay. I invested not all my life savings, but I would like to have it back. Yep. All right. So we've got an article from Crypto Petito 
uh, written by Jordan Leinchev regarding Beeple. Beeple, Discord server exploited by hackers attempting to drain wallets. Not surprising at all. Let me make this a little bit bigger so people can read it. All right. As one of the more prominent NFT artists around, Beeple has gathered quite a community around himself, and unscrupulous third parties have repeatedly attempted to get a piece of the pie for themselves for free. Attacks on, uh, let's see, earlier this year, Beeple's community was attacked via Twitter, an exploit that saw the artist account compromised and used to promote a crypto scam that directed unwary users to a phishing page pretending to be the official one of Beeple's cl uh, collaboration with Louis Vuitton. Unfortunately, the scam led uh, about half a million dollars worth of crypto and NFT stolen from unsuspecting fan artist, fans of the artist. Once he regained his account, people warned his community not to trust anything uh, that seemed too good to be true. Now, a lot of people have different pers perspectives on what's too good to be true, per the honeypot thing we talked about the other day. A point often reinforced due to similar attacks using big names such as Beeple himself, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates. Beeple's community was also targeted by scammers in November of 2021, an attack that saw a Discord administrator account hacked and used to promote a fake NFT drop. The current attack took place on Beeple's Discord channel, where a link to a collection was hijacked, sending anyone who clicks on it to a fake collab land page that drains the wallets of those who go. How is that even possible? How can you, how can someone just drain your wallet? <laughs> you know, you, I don't understand how that works. Anyways, um, it's quick to acknowledge the situation and warn his community. Okay, so let me just read the tweet since this is part of the actual writing here. At Beeple, your OpenSea Beeple Everyday's 2020 collection has a Discord link attached to that. Links to a scam at Colab Collab Land Wallet Drainer. Your Discord URL probably got hijacked and your team didn't update it on OS. You need to change that ASAP or people are going to get wrecked. So the quote says, it appears our Discord URLs were hacked to point to a fraudulent Discord. Do not go into that Discord and do not verify. It will drain your wallet because that's how it is. Okay. Once again, massive thanks. However, voices in the community pointed out that the breach may not be due to poor coding on Discord side. Instead, some users argued that the fault may lie in Beeple's Discord admin team. Blockchain expert uh, OK Hotshot, for instance, said uh, informed that the attack closely resembles one of the ones carried out by CryptoBats in the past. What happened due to mismanagement of the Discord URLs? Fortunately for Beeple's fans, the security breach seems to have been mended for now, with the phony Discord link being deleted. This, the unfortunate breach serves as a reminder to always be on the lookout for bad actors and to verify any news that seems too good to be true, per the honeypot. Basically, always true. Like, oh, uh, I'm Bill Gates, and if you send me one Bitcoin, I will send you two. Sure. I don't, yeah, I don't get it how people fall for it either. I really don't. They're like, well, it's Bill Gates. He he would obviously be able to do that. He's smart. He's a great person. I mean, it's like, are you that naive, really? <laughs> the uh, public address, which I did, I went to Blockchain Explorer, opened Blockchain Explorer, 
they then saw that this address, the public address, has active activity on it. There's literally people depositing all these funds to it. And this fund's going out. Funds going in, funds going out, funds going in, funds going out. And it's interesting because you do see one going in and two going out, one, two, one going in, two going out. It's like, huh, interesting. Okay, this looks legitimate. Why not? I'm going to give it a try. So I looked at my wallet and I go, oh, no, I actually have no Bitcoin. Coincidentally, this happens to be during literally that week of the um, um, what is it, Black Swan event, right? Right. When everything crashed, the, 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 the entire globe crashed, right? The right. market collapsed. Uh, crypto crashed down to like $4,000, right? Yep. It was crazy. And I'm like, I'm just gawking at, at Brian Armstrong like, really? You're going to actually double my Bitcoin because the market crashed? Okay, sure. So I buy uh, um, um, a big chunk of uh, uh, Bitcoin at the time, and I'm ready to send it into that address. So I get my double back. Boom. I can't, right? I can't. There is a security block on it because if you buy with cash directly with cash on Coinbase, there's like a 72-hour hold on it. Well, the next day, when I couldn't withdraw, the next day, come to find out, all the people did get scammed. Everybody got scammed out of it. I would have been one of those extra people if it wasn't for Coinbase, of course, you know, hold, holding my coins for an extra couple of days. And I go, holy smokes, I was about to fall for that, just like everybody else. I got so lucky on that one, man. Lesson learned, you know? Let other people, you know, dip their toes in the water before you do. Yeah. I, I'm, maybe I'm just naturally skeptical. I you know, worked in security for so long. I just don't believe things that people tell me, and I'm much more slow to act in some on some issues. So, I've missed opportunities. I'm so slow. <laughs> Moving on to uh, v- Gary Vandercheck here, or Gary V, because nobody can pronounce his last name. Back on Decrypt by Andrew Hayward. V friends, toys coming to Macy's. Toys. What's it? Oh, it's, it's yours. Sorry, oh, my, my bad. It's your article. My bad. Go ahead. Yep. Right, this, was a, uh, uh, this was from Decrypt.co, written by Andrew Hayward. Big fans, so it's coming to Macy's. You told the last time we came in a few fans. I still think it's ridiculous. It's just the most ridiculous thing ever. But anyways. Yeah. I wouldn't mind the wizard either, man. The wizard looks pretty cool. All right. 
Toys R Us was once a popular independent chain, but it just shut down in 2018 bankruptcy. Now, Beat Brands and President Andy told Beat Brands that the iconic brand had holds a special place in Vanderpump Trucks' heart as a toy collector. In a press release, Vanderpump Trucks said that the deal means way more to me than you could ever imagine. So, if you don't know, yeah, so Toys R Us did go bankrupt, but they came back, they rebranded, they got bought out by, I believe, Target. Uh, so, but Target still keeps. Uh, Keeps the rights to Toys R Us, but Toys R Us is now just an online uh, uh, marketplace. B Friends shipped from NFT projects to mainstream products and was telegraphed earlier this year when the project launched its Series 2 collection. While the initial 10,255 Ethereum NFTs released in 2021 were created directly from Banner Truck's own marker based Noodle, the 55,000 new Series 2 NFTs on Ethereum have more polished cartoon allure. That was intentional. Banner Truck built GPS in May to provide uh, the backbone for a wide array of potential V-Friend products, from merchandise to uh, apparel, packaging, food, games, and more. Banner Truck said that V-Friends needed to stand up, uh, stand up the intellectual property by transitioning to more robust lifestyle character designs for his creations. V-Friends is still built around Banner Truck's focus on inspirational content, which has made him a social media celebrity best-selling author, and more. But the project shifts into new kinds of content and products. Uh, Kranich said uh, that he doesn't view V-Friends just as an NFT play anymore. Quote, if you asked me a year ago, I would say V-Friends is just an NFT company. Today, I think V-Friends as a transmedia or multimedia company where we're doing stories from all forms and fashions they play and any form or medium in which we can bring to life, if you will, the characters and traits that we're hoping to inspire in others. Kranich Kranich said uh, to expect more storytelling avenues ahead for V-Friends as the company explores books, video games, and other formats. He said that the company is in its infancy in terms of generating daily online content, but that the goal is to make both community members and the broader public fall in love with the characters through story-driven initiatives. Beautiful, man. Congratulations, of course, man. Be, just, dude, that's just crazy. I'm not going to read the rest. I'm done. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Man. <laughs> I got to give him props, man. Who would have thought, like, this vision, like, this is a massive vision. Just to think, like, and the thing is, he told everybody, he didn't, he didn't even have anything. He just says, you see this? This is this doodle right here? It's going to make me millions of dollars. Yeah. And I was like, you're, you're done, dude. Like, that's a, that's the worst art I've ever seen. He goes, no, somebody out there will appreciate this, and you will see. And then he tethered a, a, a real genuine storyline behind all these characters. That's what people, when people buy these, they don't just buy them because, they, they buy them because there's an actual attachment to the character's backstory. You know, when, when you get when you get one of these, like, yeah, you, you, have, you have an NFT, right, Jake? You have an NFT. Do you know the backstory behind your NFT? Wait, uh... I have the panda ones that don't didn't know I don't even know if there is a backstory. I just thought they were kind of neat looking. That's what I'm saying. See that there it is. Boom. No. Uh V friends, they literally make backstories for these guys. So when you get them you know what what, it, what it's all about. And that's why I think it makes it more more just more precious to have something that you can be attached to. Like that's why you want this particular piece of NFT because it, it means more to you because it represents you. That's why people buy these things, you know. Pretty cool. I guess so. Let's head on over to the next one. Last article. This is on Crypto.News. Bitcoin's Lightning Network Capacity Crosses 5,000 Bitcoin. For the first time, Bitcoin's Lightning Network Capacity has surpassed, as I said, 5,000 Bitcoin, or nearly $100 million as of this post. As a result, more Bitcoin will be released to Lightning Network payment portals globally as more Bitcoiners join the network. Lightning Labs Loop, there we go, Lightning Labs Loop, and River Financial helped to push the capacity above 5,000 as they expanded their channel capacity. Earlier this year, Lightning Labs raised a funding of $70 million, which is nearly all that money, while announcing a new initiative, the Tarot Protocol. I'm guessing that's some sort of card thing. The Tarot Protocol allows the issuance of the tokens on the Bitcoin network giving way for stablecoin transactions using Bitcoin security. Usually, bear markets help to build capacity on the layer on layer 2 Lightning Network, despite the recent 
uh, macroeconomic disaster and low market prices, the Lightning Network keeps for flourishing, which is good. The Lightning Network is a protocol that enables users to send or receive Bitcoin or Satoshis, the smallest Bitcoin amount, at lower fees and more quickly. The higher the capacity of the network, the higher the liquidity. Therefore, users can conduct larger transactions and enjoy fast, uh, faster payment. The Lightning Network was first developed in 2018 to facilitate Bitcoin transactions. However, the network has come under criticism lately. Bitcoin influencers like Udi Wethermeyer noted that the uh, network is a failure as nobody uses it. Well, you're right. Not a lot of people use it, but in El Salvador, that's not untrue. Meanwhile, the network reached a capacity of 4,000 Bitcoin in June. The platform has gained popularity in Gibraltar, the Isle of Man, the, uh, and El Salvador for the last four years. Galloway's uh, CEO, Nicholas, Nicholas Birdie, was among the first to announce the milestone. In a recent interview, Birdie uh, stated that Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador helped scale the Lightning Network. Hey, that's a good use for it after all. Uh, according to him, El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption was when the Lightning Network capacity began to climb. He jokingly stated that Salvador's uh, crypto bill should have been named the Lightning Law. <laughs> Furthermore, the CEO explained that the payment velocity per each channel is growing at a faster rate. However, he noted that only the only node operators could see this metric, making it less popular in the media. Meanwhile, the Lightning Network has grown over the years. Initially, the platform was mainly for hobbyist Bitcoin supporters. However, large corporations have started using the platform, obviously, probably in El Salvador. One such institution is MicroStrategy, a company f famous for purchasing gargantuan amounts of Bitcoin. I know I ad-libbed that. Recently, the company issued a notice that it wants to hire a Bitcoin Lightning software engineer, which we definitely talked about recently. The firm holds the largest amount of Bitcoin publicly at 130,000 Bitcoin even. In other news, not that we care, PTC Lightning firm Strike, led by Jack Maulers, has raised over $80 million. The fund aims to revolutionize the payment system for merchants. Strike and Maulers are part of those who contributed to El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption last year. So, lightning, woo-hoo. I, I, I really want, like, a good, if you guys are listening or watching, or, or Jake, if you know, a really high-quality um, um, video out there that can really explain lightning to me. I, I, you know, I've looked at a lot of videos, and just time and time again, and just sometimes where I just don't understand what point, or sometimes I do understand, and then another part of it just doesn't make sense, and then I find out that, that maybe Lightning is just way too centralized, and it just, it just, what, what is going on here? It's rabbit hole being in, 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 in Lightning Network just goes deeper than what is being taught. Like, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. Okay. That's for sure. I can't say I fully understand it myself, but yeah.